to the house. The doorway would have been just through here to where this tree is, and then all along here would have been the house. The public footpath now runs through this, uh, straight through what would have been this farm, but it would have been its own little enclosure at one time. As we make our way through, I'll show you the gate bus to this farm, and they're uh, quite interesting. They're a little bit different. As you can see, Liptrot's farm would have been a three-roomed building. I don't know if this would have been just a single-storey dwelling or whether it would have been two-storey. We would have had three rooms. I should imagine the back, though, would have been the uh, kitchen and this would have been the sort of living area here in the middle and the back there where the porch entrance was would have just been another another type of room where people would have just sat with the bedrooms upstairs. Now these are rather interesting gateposts because normally you would have an inch on one side and a keeper on the other. Well these have been notched to a lower bar, wooden bar, to sit in the post to my left and to sit in there and that would form a barrier. So those are rather interesting. Right, we'll, uh, we'll move on now and see what else we can find. I'm now at New Ground Farm and the wall at the side of me here, despite giving the appearance of being a wall to a building, it's actually a retaining wall for the yard that's above me. It was so that the yard could be flattened out and overcome this drop here. Now, it's amazing to think that this was built in the 1800s as a retaining wall and it's still doing the same job today. Um, and it's not really, there's been no, apart from the odd little bit of cement in there, there's been no patching up or any work done on it. So fair play to the builders who built this. I wonder if uh, 21st century retaining walls will still be standing 200 years later. One of the stone buttresses, or the remains of a stone buttress, that would have supported this returning wall, or as we call them in Wigan, sprags. I'm now in the milking sheds of what would have been New Ground Farm, and uh, these are the only things that still remain in these old stone slabs. You can probably just see off camera, there's two of them. Uh, many, this was, obviously this is where the cows would have been milked and uh, there's not really much left on of these uh, what they would have actually been used for I don't know whether it was just separators in between as we've seen in those stables further down and I, I don't know I'm now inside another one of the, the remains of the buildings what's interesting with this one is that the one to my right is an extension and as you can probably see that the straight joint there's been no keying in modern building, you know, that would be keyed across to tie the buildings together, like that. Obviously back in the 19th century they didn't think as that was necessary, but judging from the thickness of the walls, I'm not surprised really, because you're talking gear thick. So, yeah, just a, what the, again, what these would have been, I don't know, probably burns of some description. I mean, literally you could carry on going on here, finding remains forever. I think there's about 50 lost burns on the moors from Andalzark, so... We're not going to be here that long, don't worry, but we'll move on and see what uh, else. There's supposed to be a manor farm in here, or not a manor farm, sorry, a manor house in here, the remains of that, called Heatherly, and that's what we're actually looking for, because there's a lot of dressed stone in there and remains of that. So we'll see if we can find it. We shouldn't be too far from it now. As promised, we've found it. This is Heatherly Manor House. And you join me by the well. This would have been the well at the time. It does look like a fireplace, but it's not. The water storage tank's just over the back. So we'll go and have a look at it in a bit. It's like a big pit. But uh, this would have been it. This is where the money was in this area. And probably all those uh, farms that we've visited were paying money for a tenancy to this place. 
Now we'll have a quick loop round here, obviously there's quite a bit of rubble so we'll have to stop and start but there's quite a few bits of nice stone laying about in this area. So let's uh, go and have a look at some of it shall we? The only remaining bit of the Heatherly House, as you can see from this stonework here, the big keystones and the way it's all locked in um, from the farm houses we've seen, this is obviously where, uh, where there's money, this has been expensive stonework as opposed to just rough face. Uh, there's a, what appears to be either a doorstep or a window, I would say that's probably a windowsill and that's probably an headstone, you know, a stone that goes over a lintel into some cellars. Uh, whether or not if you went underneath though you'd just pop up the other side or whether there is a cellar in there, I don't know. There's probably not anymore as there would have been wooden floors and it's probably just all collapsed in. And this little bit here would have been, the back, I should imagine, the backyard to it. I should imagine it would have had a, a back entrance, probably servants quarters at the back here, just judging from it. Especially seeing as the well's just over there, they would have come out and got the water and took it in. The fronts were where the gentry would have lived, I should imagine. I'm now studying what would have been one of the bare windows to this uh, manor house and as you can see from the, the shape of these stones and this here, this would have been one of the central piers there would have been fur old size windows just uh, to the back of me though is the terrace garden which here this house would have looked onto and all that would have been lawn again none of those trees would have been there so you would have had a lovely view all the way straight down across Brinskull and far beyond. I should imagine it, uh, it was quite a bonny house this in its day. However, it's all been lost now. I don't know the family that lived in this house unfortunately. Uh, there's, no, there's no research on that. But uh, we'll move on and see if we can see the water storage tank, shall we now? Now this is the water storage tank to the house that, that below. I can just see the clay park here, so obviously water would have run from the hill in front of me down through the pipes and gone into this storage tank. It would have then gone down another further level, you see they would have used gravitational pull, there would have been no pumps back then, and that would have been the idea of getting water. This would have then fed the well and they would have drawn water out of it. Every time they drew water out, it would fill up again and then naturally stop. They're quite clever really using gravitational pull, we, we no longer bother doing that do we, as we, we have pumps and barren electricity. But this is a fur old sized hole. I wouldn't like to fall in it. The wall has been rendered inside with sand and cement to try and give it, you know, keep some water in so it wouldn't leak. Well, I should imagine there would have been a constant supply of water running down off them hills. Well here we are, back at uh, top of the wood farm and uh, we're about to go back to the car now because uh, we'll, I'll get the dogs a drink and I'll have a brew myself. Just out of interest, this is the well that we didn't see it last time when we was, uh, was leaking around this area. A more of an ornate well, even better than the one at uh, the manor house up, just up the hill there. So anyway, that's it, that concludes the lost uh, farms of Brinskull. So until the next time, when we go and have another little mooch around, bye bye for now.